My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control software tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this Continuous Recording Part 2 with Image Based Auto Trigger tutorial, we will cover using Continuous Recording combined with the Image Based Auto Trigger feature to trigger the camera. Continuous recording can be used in a variety of ways to automatically record a CINE into the camera's memory, then immediately edit and save that CINE to a user-specified location of an attached hard drive without any user intervention by providing a soft or hard trigger to the camera. Once the save process completes, the camera will automatically be placed back into the recording mode to repeat the process until the continuous recording feature is disabled by the end user. The image-based auto trigger feature should never be used in applications where miss or false triggering cannot be tolerated or where a false trigger could cause harm to people or property. The hardware signaling available in some image-based auto trigger modes should only be used to synchronize multiple phantom cameras together and should never be used to trigger or control any other external device or event. Consequences resulting from system failure false triggering or misuse of this feature are the sole responsibility of the user. For this tutorial I'm going to rely upon a change in the live image to trigger the camera and then by using the continuous recording feature edit and save the event out to a user specified location then return back to the recording mode and wait for the next event to occur. I'm going to leave all the city settings as is and quickly check that the trigger position is set so we trigger the camera in the middle of the cine by selecting the number of post trigger frames we need from the last pull down selection list. As we did in the first continuous recording tutorial, I'll need to scroll down and open the continuous recording selector, then scroll down some more to see all the continuous recording options. I need to click the browse button and navigate to the folder the cine files will be saved into. In this case, my C colon, program files, phantom, cines, tutorial cines folder. I need to assign a file name that can be used to name multiple files. So I need to use the phantom file naming convention to do this. You can find out more about the phantom file naming convention in the PCC supplied help file. For this tutorial, I'm going to assign the file name CRIBET at 4 where CRIBET will be the root name, AT is the special character, and 4 is the number of digits that will be appended to the root file name as you will see later. I'll leave the file format as Cine RAW and rather than save the full range of images I'm going to save 200 pre-trigger frames and 200 post-trigger frames. So I need to enter the image number negative 200 in the first image field and 200 in the last image field. This way I will get the trigger frame T0 right in the middle of the save cine. I'll also set the desired save options. Then click the save button. Now that I'm ready on the continuous recording side I need to set up the image based auto trigger feature by opening the image based auto trigger selector. Then enable the image based auto trigger feature Notice when I enable this feature, all the image-based auto trigger options are activated. If the camera didn't support image-based auto trigger, the enable box would be grayed out. Now I need to select the area that the camera needs to look at for changes to trigger the camera. But before I do, I want to enable the show on image feature if it's not already checked. You'll see why in a minute. I'll set the area by drawing a box where I want the camera to look in to determine if the camera should trigger itself or not. When the pop-up window displays, I'll select the auto trigger command from the list. As you can see, the software has overlaid a box displaying the area I just specified. This is because I enabled the show on image option. You don't have to worry, the box is not recorded with the captured setting. 
Notice the area doesn't include the fan, so the camera won't get a false trigger from it. Yet it is an area a Nerf bullet will pass through as it moves across the image. Now I need to specify the criteria that needs to be satisfied in order to trigger the camera. For details on the criteria, please review the Using the Image Based Auto Trigger tutorial. I'm going to set these requirements as follows. The threshold will be set to 10, the area percentage to 10, and the check interval to 50 milliseconds. Before I continue, I'm going to ensure that the auto trigger settings will trigger the camera. As you can see, the camera has triggered and if I click on the Manager tab, you can see that the Miro Lab 310 Cam 3 has a Cine in it, Cine 1. And if I click on the Play tab and jump to the trigger frame, you can see the Nerf bullet passing through the area I specified to trigger the camera. So now we know our image-based auto trigger optioning is set up correctly and we're good to go. Now I'll scroll back down to the continuous recording area and enable the feature. When the continuous recording warning message appears, telling me that the image data in the camera will be deleted if I enable continuous recording, I'll click the Yes button. Notice the record indicator is now active, telling me the camera is acquiring pre-trigger frames. And the trigger button is now active. So rather than manually triggering the camera by clicking the trigger button as I have in the previous tutorials, this time I'm going to rely on the image based auto trigger feature to trigger the continuous recording event. As you can see, the Nerf bullet has triggered the camera and the camera is now recording post trigger frames. Once all the post trigger frames have been recorded, the camera edits the Cine based on the image range I specified and start saving the Cine to the location I specified. If I wanted to, I could have accelerated the Cine save process by enabling the minimal GUI refresh option. This option disables the save progress indicators in the preview panel during the save Cine procedure. I'm going to leave this disabled or unchecked. Now that the save process has completed, notice the camera is back into the recording mode awaiting another trigger. Why not? Let's send another Nerf bullet through the image and trigger the camera again. And just like it did a moment ago, the camera will save the edited Cine out to the specified hard drive. Before we review one of the Cines I just recorded, I'm going to disable the continuous recording feature and click the Yes button in the continuous recording confirmation window. I also need to disable the image based auto trigger feature, so I'll scroll back up and uncheck the image based auto trigger enable box. To review the save Cine, I need to click on the open file toolbar button and navigate to the folder where the file was saved. Highlight the file I want to open, then click on the open button. As you can see, the file has been opened in a play panel and the Play tab has been selected. So let's take a look at the Cine and see what was recorded. Let's start by jumping to the trigger frame by clicking on the T or trigger button. As you can see, the Nerf bullet is in the area I specified to trigger the camera. And the save Cine image range is from negative 200 to 200 for a total of 400 images just as I specified. So this is a way to combine continuous recording with image based auto trigger and rely on events of interest to trigger the camera in an unattended mode and then save that event out to a disk drive, return to the recording mode, and wait for the next event of interest.